But what if I told you there was a way to edit with high quality footage while still getting a smooth editing workflow? Mm, now I've got your attention, right? So if you've been around on my channel for a while or you follow me on Instagram, you know that I am an absolute advocate for using proxies. Now, if you aren't familiar with proxies, basically they are a low resolution video that's kind of like a placeholder while you're editing to basically smooth out your editing software or make it faster so it's a bit easier to use. And then when the time comes to actually export it, it just uses the original files, not the proxies, so you still get a high resolution export. If you do want to learn what my full workflow is around proxies, then I'll leave a link up here in case you want to check that out. Now, proxies work really good if you are using a slower machine, but the downside of proxies is that the image quality drops to allow you to edit faster and smoother. But what if I told you there was a way to edit with high quality footage while still getting a smooth editing workflow? Mm, now I've got your attention, right? So recently I learned more about all the different codecs that are out there and what they are good and bad for. And I learned that there's actually some codecs that are really good for video editing and some that are actually really bad. Now what was surprising to me is that H.264 is actually a really bad codec for video editing. Now this was super confusing because I've literally spent my entire career editing with H.264 footage for all 14 years. And I'm only now just learning that there is a better codec to be editing with. And the reason why H.264 is a bad editing codec is because it is a compressed codec. So basically what this means is that when you're recording a video, all that data is being compressed into the smallest file size that it can while still retaining a good quality. But now the problem is, is that because you've got a compressed file, when we bring that into an editing software before it can use it and when it's actually using the file, it has to be always decompressing it so it can access all that data. And this is all happening seamlessly in the background in your computer, you don't even notice it's happening until you start getting some dropped frames or lagging in your software. And DJI footage is absolutely Absolutely horrendous for this. If your computer can play back DJI files smoothly, you've got a freaking beast of a computer. And let's face it, we've all been here. You go to play back your video and it drops every third to fourth frame and it's just choppy and it just makes the experience so much worse. So the problem here is that a lot of your computer's resources is going to actually decompressing those files so you can use it rather than the actual editing software itself. Now I'm sure you've all heard of Apple ProRes, but if you haven't, it is a codec technology developed for high quality performance editing. The downside of ProRes is that because it's a lot less compressed, the file sizes are much, much bigger. And they can be anywhere from two to 10 times bigger than the original files. So there are a bunch of different ProRes codecs that you can choose from, but ProRes 422 would have to be the most commonly used and most commonly talked about. But the main difference between the codecs is the bit rates. The higher the bit rate, the better the quality. But just keep in mind that if you are transcoding to ProRes, if you start with the low bit rate and you transcode to a higher bit rate, you're actually not going to get any quality improvements, you're just going to get bigger file sizes, which is just going to take up more space on your computer. It's also a good thing to note that ProRes 422 is actually a variable bitrate, which means that it can adjust the bitrate depending on how much information is in the image to basically keep the file sizes low, but again, keep that high quality image. So now we've moved from a compressed file to a, let's say, uncompressed file. All those resources that our computer was using to decompress that compressed file can now go towards actually editing. So now to demonstrate the difference this makes in your editing software, if we actually jump into Premiere Pro and we bring in the original H.265 compressed video, we chuck in our timer and try scrub through it, you'll notice that it is very, very choppy. And if we play it back, you can see that it will play for a little bit, but it'll eventually start lagging and getting choppy as well. Now, if we compare this to the ProRes 422 version, we chuck that into our timeline, you can see that it is super smooth to scrub through the timeline. And if we play it back, it plays back flawlessly. We can even chuck a grade on it and it will still scrub fine and play back just fine. And the big thing to notice is that there's been no loss in quality like you would have with a proxy file. Now to quickly show the difference between the different types of ProRes codecs, you can see that we've got the original H.265, ProRes 422, ProRes 422 LT, which is a light codec, and then ProRes 422 Proxy, which is meant to be a proxy codec for the actual 422 files. However, when viewing them on YouTube, you're probably not going to be able to tell the difference because YouTube compresses the file anyway. And I even threw this clip up on my 55-inch TV to do some pixels 
pixel peeping, and honestly, I couldn't really tell the difference between it anyway, mainly because when I exported it out from Premiere Pro, I was exporting it out into a H.264 format anyway, so it compresses it again. However, if you are working on a high-end production and you want to make sure that you retain as much data and the best quality image possible, then definitely use ProRes 422 in this instance. Now, what is the actual process to converting the files or transcoding the files to a different codec? Now, you can set this up in the ingest tab to do it automatically when you import files into Premiere Pro, or you can just do it manually like I do because you generally don't need to transcode every single file you're using because most computers now can keep up with compressed files. The main file types that I've started transcoding now are DJI files, GoPro files, and iPhone files. The main reason is because they're now recording in a H.265 format, which is a better quality, but it is an even more compressed format, which means that your computer has to work twice as hard to decompress that while you're actually editing it. So how we manually transcode our files is by using the Adobe Media Encoder. Now on Windows, I'm pretty sure that ProRes isn't installed by default. So I'll leave a link down below so you can download the files and import them using this button in Adobe Media Encoder. And once we're actually in Adobe Media Encoder, we just need to drag in the clips we actually want to convert, highlight them all, and then click on one of the clips in the clip format. We then go up to format and choose QuickTime, then come down to the video codec and choose the ProRes one that we are wanting to use. And also make sure to click match source to make sure the settings are all the same. Then we can just click OK. Now we just need to leave them to transcode similar to making proxy files. And when they're done, we just need to import them into Premiere Pro and you're ready to rock. All right guys, if you did enjoy this video, then consider liking and subscribing. And if you know an editor who we all do, who struggles with this, then be sure to share it with them so they can get out of this painful loop. Because we've all been there trying to edit on those choppy timelines and it's just an absolute nightmare. And as always guys, stay creative and just be you. See ya.